Giovanni Dos Santos, a name that once sent shivers down the spine of defenders, a player who was considered a prodigy, a once in a generation talent. As a teenager, he burst onto the scene, showcasing his incredible skills and vision, leaving onlookers in awe. He was a player who had it all pace, technique, creativity, and an eye for a goal. He was quickly snapped up at one of the biggest clubs in the world, Barcelona, where he was seen as the future of the club's midfield. But as his career progressed, it became clear that something went wrong. His potential went unfulfilled, his performances became inconsistent, and his career never reached the heights that were once predicted for him. Mani moved from club to club, and after a few loan spells and transfers, he couldn't establish himself as a regular starter in any of the teams he was playing, and he couldn't fulfill his true potential. One can't help but wonder, what happened? How did a player with so much talent and promise fall short of expectations? Was it bad luck, poor decisions, or something else? Join me as we take a closer look at the career of Giovanni Dos Santos and try to unravel the mystery of what went wrong and if there's still a chance for him to make a comeback and write a different story. Let's get right into it. Giovanni Dos Santos began his career with Barcelona in La Liga. He joined the famed La Masia Academy at the young age of 14, where he quickly made a name for himself with his skillful play and impressive goal scoring ability. He was considered one of the top prospects in the academy and his performances caught the attention of the first team coaches. He made his debut for the team in 2007 and played for the club for four years winning several domestic and international titles including La Liga, Copa del Rey and Supercopa de España. He was under and competed for a spot under the likes of Lionel Messi, Ronaldinho and Thierry Henry and I truly believe this should have been an eye-opening experience for everyone at Barcelona but more specifically for the Mexican and as you all know in the future they created a dynasty that impacted the world of football. During his time at Barcelona, Dos Santos was known for his ability and quick feet, but he struggled to establish himself as a regular starter due to the strong competition for places in the team. He was often loaned out to other clubs to gain more experience, but despite his talent, he was not able to fully break into the first team. Before joining Barcelona, Dos Santos was already representing Mexico's national team. He was called up for the U-17 World Cup in 2005 and helped the team win the tournament. He was a captain and was considered one of the best players in the tournament. He was also named as the top goal scorer. Besides that magnificent spell of games internationally, he has been so inconsistent with Mexico that he wasn't even selected in the 2018 and 2022 World Cups. The only other call that I can remember at the top of my head is the London Olympic Games in 2012, where he was able to beat the likes of Brazil and Neymar and company. But a little thing that I need, I think I kind of researched is that he wasn't even starting in that game. So I think I would essentially deduct some points off of that. Other than that, I think he scored a crazy banger goal against the US in the Gold Cup final. So in this video, I'm not going to be mentioning more Mexico and Giovanni stats just because he doesn't have that much relevant information and he hasn't been good for Mexico at all, to be honest. And he also hasn't won any trophies, any major trophies with Mexico. In 2008, Los Santos loaned out to Tottenham Hotspur in the English Premier League. He joined the team during the middle of the season and despite showing flashes of brilliance during his time at the club, he struggled to establish himself as a regular starter. He played for the club for a season-long loan where he was often deployed as a winger, but he could not make a consistent impact and could not score as many goals as expected. At the end of the loan period, he returned to Barcelona. After returning to Barcelona, he was once loaned out again to Galatasaray and Racing Santander. Dos Santos was loaned out for the 2010-2011 season with Galatasaray. He joined the Turkish club during the winter transfer window and made his debut in January 2011. Despite the club high expectations, he struggled to establish himself as a regular starter due to the strong competition for places in the team. He made a total of 13 appearances for the club, scoring one goal in the Turkish Cup. Despite his limited playing time, he was able to gain valuable experience playing in a different league and culture. After his loan spell in Galatasaray, Dos Santos was loaned out again to Racing Santander for the 2011-2012 season. He joined the Spanish club during the summer transfer window and made his debut in August 2011. He played a total of 14 games for Racing Santander, scoring one goal in the Copa del Rey, once again struggled to establish himself as a regular starter due to the strong competition for the places in the team. After his loan spell at Racing Santander, he returned to Barcelona, but as mentioned before, he struggled to establish himself as a regular starter and eventually left the club. Giovanni was loaned out three times and couldn't be a starter in any of those three teams 
games. So I think in my opinion that this damages reputation and how the fans viewed him, essentially meaning also how clubs viewed him. No top clubs wanted him after those three loan spells. In 2011, he joined Villarreal, which is essentially his most consistent spell at any club. And he was able to, to help them reach the semifinals of the Europa League. During his time at Villarreal, Giovanni Dos Santos showed glimpses of his potential, displaying his skill, creativity, and vision on the pitch. However, his performances were inconsistent and he was often plagued by injuries which limited his playing time. Despite this, he still managed to score some important goals for the club and was involved in several key moments for the team. Despite his struggles, the Villarreal fans still highly regarded Giovanni Dos Santos, who appreciated his work rate and passion for the game. He spent two seasons at the club, making a total of 56 appearances and scoring eight goals. However, after three seasons, he left the club and joined LA Galaxy in 2015, and initially, he showed promise with his performances. He had a good start and was able to score goals, but over time, as usual, his performances began to decline. He was affected by injuries, inconsistent form, and off the field issues. He struggled to adapt to the physical demands of the league and had difficulty maintaining a consistent level of performance. He was affected by injuries despite the LA Galaxy's efforts to help him settle in. He could not fully adjust to the league and replicate his performances in Europe. He struggled to maintain a consistent level of performance and eventually his contract was terminated by mutual agreement. In addition to these problems, Dos Santos has been criticized for his lack of focus and dedication. He has been known to have a poor attitude and off the field behavior, which has caused issues with the team. This has led to a lack of trust and confidence from his coaches and teammates, further hindering its progress. His last spell came with Club America, where he found a more regular playing time, but still not at the level of his previous clubs. Club America is Mexico's most popular team, and playing for them has been his dream ever since he was a child. He could not fit the bill and the team as well. At this moment, he doesn't have a team to play, and as sad as that is, I'm really not surprised by this. Dos Santos has had a difficult career marked by injuries, inconsistency, which have all contributed to his decline in form and relevance. It will take a lot of hard work and dedication for him to turn things around and regain the form that once made him one of the top prospects in the game. One thing is certain, Giovanni Dos Santos' story is not over yet. He still has time to make a comeback to prove that he can live up to the expectations that were set for him. He still has the potential to become the player that many believed he would be. The mystery of what went wrong remains, but the possibility of redemption is still there. It's a reminder that nothing is ever certain in the world of football and that sometimes the greatest comeback stories are yet to be written. The end of Giovanni Dos Santos story has yet to be written. Is he going to be the player that gave up and never came out of retirement or will he be the player that comes back and shows everyone why he is the player that he is or why Barcelona looked at him when he was young and decided to purchase him. You know, he played with the likes of Ronaldinho and Messi. Had to be a reason why they signed him if he wasn't good. Only time will tell.